Hi guys, this is Crystal. Welcome to Emerson Aurora Design. And today I'm going to show you how I make this wood grain crackle 3D styled my Be Kind tumbler. I'm starting off with a 20 ounce modern curve that I purchased from the Stainless Depot. And I'm going to do the hang method um, with the epoxy here. Uh, when you do a hang method, you want to use a very tiny amount of resin. Um, just enough to barely cover the surface of the tumbler. And it'll seem like you don't have enough, but just the warmth of your hand will help spread that epoxy. You don't want to add too much epoxy because since you're hanging the tumbler to dry, to cure, um, you don't want it to um, move, the epoxy to move or drip. So I'm just spreading that around with a gloved hand and I'm going to apply my glitter. I don't usually use the hang method too often anymore, but all of my turners were being used at this time and I just wanted to get this glittered. It works really well. It's a good way to um, apply epoxy, you know, apply glitter to your tumbler if you don't have a turner. But remember, just a tiny, tiny bit of resin, just enough to barely coat that um, tumbler. You have to use a little bit of elbow grease to spread that epoxy. Um, it's always a little cool in my craft room. So after that I'm going to remove my glove and I'm going to apply my glitter. I'm using a fine cut glitter by the Glitter Craze. And I'll show it to you here in just a second. It's called Vintage. It's a nice pretty, it's a pretty um, champagne gold, kind of vintage gold glitter. And this is the base for a peekaboo. If you're wondering where I got that little tray that I'm catching my glitter in, purchased that from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has so many wonderful um, little gadgets that you can use in your crafting, not just for the garage. Uh, I went there and I spent way too much money <laughs> a couple weeks ago. And these are really nice to um, catch your glitter. You can see how pretty that glitter is. It really has a unique shine to it. Um, I guess it's not a fine cut, it's more of a medium mix. So I'm just applying that here to the tumbler and I'm going to let that hang on my little makeshift tumbler holder slash paper towel holder. <laughs> and I'm going to let that cure for 24 hours before I go in with my next step. I am going, once that's finished curing, I'm going to put it on my turner and add about two layers of epoxy. And this is after those two layers have cured and I have sanded this cup down for it to be smooth. You want it to be smooth before you add your peekaboo decals. I'm going to do the bee honeycomb um, decals from the peekaboo. And I just apply these randomly over the cup in just different patterns. Um, that I like. There's no rhyme or reason for it. You want to make sure that the little points on the honeycomb are pointing up and down. Um, I was I learned that that is the natural way that honeycombs actually form or are made I should say by the little bees. So I'm just adding different um, different little clumps I guess <laughs> of the vinyl and you can use any color vinyl for this part because you are going to be peeling it up. This vinyl I have, I bought large um, multi-packs in black and white from Arteza.com. Um, really good price on these. I like the vinyl itself. I use this for so many of my projects and I can leave a link in the description below if you're interested. It's a nice way to get a bulk um, pack of white and black if those are the colors you use the most. They are for me. So here's after with the stickers on. I originally was going to spray paint this that matte black, but I actually went in and sprayed it a matte white instead because I had an amazing idea to do this as a white on white crackle. 
instead of the black. I was going to do the black base with a white crackle over, but I decided to do a white base with a white crackle over, and you'll see what why here in a few minutes. I have never seen anyone do this before, so I was really excited to give it a try. So I'm using regular Elmer's glue for my base. This is for the crackle. My Elmer's glue was very, very thick and clumpy. I think I've had that for about probably 10 years now, <laughs> but it turned out to be good. Um, I'm going for a really rustic kind of grungy wood, used up wood grain um, crackle. So that went on really thick. So it just shows that you can use real thick glue if you need to. I'm going to apply that to the whole surface. Some areas were a little thicker than others and that's fine. This was an experiment for me. Like I said, I had never seen anyone do a white on white crackle before. So I was really excited to try a new technique. Just apply this glue in um, up and down strokes. Uh, it's okay if you go over it a couple times. I was just trying to get it kind of smoothed out since it was so thick. And it is, like I said, thicker in other, some areas than others, and that was fine. It actually worked to my benefit later. I'm just speeding this up here. If you're wondering, I'm outside today. Just the sound of the birds, and it's such a pretty day out today. It's a beautiful spring day, and I'm listening to all the birds sing. <laughs> So that glue almost is completely dry. It is still a little bit tacky wet. I'm going to go in with my acrylic white paint here. You can apply it while that glue is still a little bit wet. But when you apply the um, acrylic paint, you do want to just brush it on in a single stroke. The more you mess with it, it may make your crackles kind of strange looking. So just um, one even stroke is fine. I wasn't 100% sure if that thick glue that I used was actually going to work, so I had every intention of possibly stripping this cup <laughs> until I saw the result. It, the crackle turned out really cool. I'm really, really happy with it. So it just shows that you can, um, you know, just kind of go with your idea. If it doesn't work, you can always wash it off especially with the glue and paint mixture um, it's easy to wash off since I already applied the resin underneath. Now just remember I do have my vinyl under all of this mess of glitter and paint. Um, I am going to have to peel that up at some point but once the crackles form they kind of form around the vinyl which made it a little easier for me to find that vinyl underneath. If you have a hard time with it, you can add little glue dots to your vinyl so that you can find them easier. But I didn't have, really didn't have any trouble. So I'm just using my heat gun here to dry that. It's hard to tell because the lighting's so bright, but the crackle is really, really neat. Um, this is white on white, so it's a little hard to see. But we're going to make it show up here in a minute. So I'm taking some isopropyl alcohol and putting it in my little silicone cup. And I'm taking my little chip brush that I always use my wood grains with that has a ton of alcohol ink on it. And I literally am just dipping that brush into the alcohol ink, or I'm sorry, the alcohol, to reactivate that ink. So I'm brushing it directly over. I'm not, I don't care if there's drips or swirls. I'm just brushing it on because I'm going to go in with a paper towel and wipe it back off. That wiping it off will allow that alcohol ink to kind of sink into those cracks. And there you can kind of see how cool it looks. I'm sorry this is not centered, um, but you can still get the idea. So I'm going to go in and do this several times, um, layering the alcohol ink over and over to get the um, honey color that I want.
So I'm not using any fresh alcohol ink on this. It's all the ink that was residual from that, um, my regular wood grain paint brush that I use. You can start to see those crackles now. This ends up looking like an old battered tree. And in my idea was that this will be like an old battered tree with a honeycomb inside. And I really love the effect that this gives. I love texture and this really has a lot of texture to it. So I'm just going to keep going on brushing on the alcohol ink and then wiping it back off. Um, and it will get darker and darker as it goes. Right now I'm going to go ahead and pull up the pieces of vinyl. Now one thing that I did encounter with this, anytime you use, do the crackle effect and use uh, acrylic paint with vinyl, you know, vinyl stencil peekaboos, it will pull up that acrylic paint. So I did have to go in with an exacto knife and kind of score around those shapes so that it didn't pull up my paint. And it still did pull up. You can see the little white areas where it revealed the spray paint underneath. But I'm going to go in and fix that here in just a little while, and you'll see how I do. Um, it really didn't bother me since this was supposed to be a real kind of rustic uh, textured look. But I do kind of fiddle with it a little bit here. And you can see where the alcohol ink kind of um, outlined those pieces of vinyl. And that's why I say that it wasn't too hard to find those pieces of vinyl under all the thick paint and glue. Sorry about my dog, he's outside with me. So just keep working, pulling up that vinyl um, until you get it all up. Like I said, um, scoring it helped, but it did still pull up. That glue really stuck to the vinyl and made it kind of gooey. You can see it, how it's kind of pulling up funky. But that's okay. <laughs> I just go with the flow. We're going to fix all these little uh, mistakes with more, um, more of the alcohol ink here in a few minutes. You see how it's starting to look like um, an old uh, old tree trunk? <laughs> Just reminds me of an old tree trunk with a honeycomb in it. My dog's saying hello to the neighbor dog. <laughs> I think that you can recreate this in many different colors of alcohol ink. 
You could do like a gray so it looks more like a birch tree bark. Um, you could do it in black. And blue would be neat too if you're going for that color. But I just really like this honey color that it turned out. I'm going to make it a little darker here in a few minutes too. This one was a little bit tricky to pull up. Some areas were thicker than others with the glue, so I had to do more scoring on it. And now I'm going to go in and fix those white areas that are around the honeycomb. I'm just going to take the brush with that alcohol ink that um, diluted from the brush and just brush directly over. I'm going to do the same technique that I did in the beginning. Um, just brush it over those areas and then wipe it off with paper towel. Don't worry if the alcohol ink gets on the glitter here at this point. I'm going to go in with a Q-tip and an alcohol here uh, to clean those up in just a little bit. So this isn't like a traditional wood grain. I'm not going to take the brush and go back and forth, back and forth to make a wood grain effect because that crackle is doing it for me. See? I covered up those white areas. So I'm just going to continue to do that over all of those little spots until I have, um, have them all covered up. This will also help to make that uh, wood color, the honey color, a little bit darker too. You will get messy if you're not wearing gloves with this. I got alcohol ink everywhere. <laughs> you can see in my little tray. It is like there. I had it splattered on my Q-tips and splattered across my uh, work table here. <laughs> it's a bit of a mess. And there it is. Now the alcohol ink did get on that glitter, so I'm going to go in with my Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol. Well, I guess I'll do that in a minute. First I'm going to spray some rubbing alcohol directly on the cup and just kind of brush it over to give it more texture. I'm just trying to blend those areas that I added into the other. And just keep going until it looks the way you want it to. Like I said, I didn't have a map for this. I had never seen anybody do this before. So I was just kind of uh, making it up as I go. I'm just spraying the alcohol here. You can't see it because it's outside of the thing. Can you see how neat that looks? It really does look like tree bark. I really love this effect. I think it would be neat as a wood grain done this way. It's just a different way of doing it. So I'm just taking 91% isopropyl alcohol on a Q-tip and just cleaning up the little glittered areas and wiping off some of that alcohol, um, the, the brown alcohol ink. I don't mind if it has a little bit of it on there. It gives it kind of a fluid effect fluid effect and um, makes it look like honey so I really like the effect that it gave. To me this is more of a natural um, bee look than some of my others have been. 
at least this far, you'll see what I do later, and it does not look like a natural bee look. <laughs> I think that turned out really pretty. You could stop here if you want, but I'm going to keep moving on. So I printed out my vinyl. I wanted to say be kind. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I did add a layer of resin over that um, the alcohol ink after I was finished here, and this is after it has cured. And then I cut out my vinyl. I printed out this little be kind, and I um, printed out some vintage flowers to put on here. flowers um, I found on Google. I just googled vintage painted flowers and that's what I came up with and I loaded them into my design space and used print and cut to cut them out. I made my little bee kind with little baby bee on it and I'm going to add those flowers around just kind of scattered. I thought those were really pretty. They remind me of the old Victorian paintings. I printed these out on my glossy printable vinyl that I purchased from Amazon. I can leave a link for that in the description below if you're interested. This printable vinyl is really nice. Um, I'm, I've been happy with it. I've been, this is probably my third pack that I've used. So um, it just gives a nice little um, shine to it, which doesn't really matter because I go over it with um, resin, but it the ink lays nicely on it and I've just been happy with this brand. Now I did cut out the flowers with the leaves but in a few of them I will go in with my X-Acto knife and trim off any areas of the leaf that I didn't like. Sometimes the print and cut um, leaves little white areas of the vinyl that I don't really like so that's what I'm doing. I'm trimming those off so that it's just the flower and the leaf. I didn't like the way the leaves were down here on this flower, so I just went ahead and cut it off with my X-Acto knife, trimmed it up. I think I'm going to put one more flower. Just trimming off some of those leaves that I didn't really want on there. I had more of the flower. There we go. Looks pretty. It's okay to use your X-Acto knife over the resin cup because when you go in with your next layer of resin, it will fill in those little scratched areas that you make with the X-Acto knife. So I was happy with that. So these little bees I purchased on AliExpress, 
They're little bee charms with little rhine rhinestones on the wings, but they have a little um, jump ring at the top, and I didn't want that on my tumbler, so I'm just taking some wire cutters and snipping them off. If you do this, just be careful. You don't want to cut yourself, and those little metal pieces will go flying, so just kind of cup it in your hand. This worked out really well. I just wanted to add the little bees, the little 3D bees to the cup. We added a little bling, a little jewelry effect. I'm using some Gorilla Super Glue, or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the gel style, which I like to use the gel super glue. I'm just going to squirt it on this little piece of plastic. And <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but every time I use super glue, I like glue my fingers together. So I'm trying to be as careful as possible using this little plastic pipette to kind of scoop it up and apply it to the back of my little bee. I'm going to use some tweezers to try to keep it from touching my fingers. Just hold it there for um, a couple seconds and it sticks instantly. I am going to resin over this, over the bees also. It'll hold them in place even more. So this glue is just to kind of hold them in place while, until I get to my resin. So you can use E6000 or super glue, whichever you prefer. E6000 does take a little bit longer to, to dry than the super glue though. I think I only put about four little bees on there, which was plenty. I didn't want to overdo it. This cup's already pretty much over the top. I've always wanted to do one of these tumblers with the little jeweled bees on it. So I thought this one was the perfect one to do with the new technique. One thing I did notice, which I didn't anticipate, when this glue dried, it actually left a white residue underneath each bee that you could see um, so after this glue was um, completely dry, I just took a little Q-tip with some um, alcohol ink and kind of went over that. So now I'm going to do a honey drip. Um, I've only done one other drip before, and I really wanted to add um, a drip to this cup that makes it look like dripping honey. So I'm using some, uh, this is a translucent pigment um, resin dye that I purchased from Amazon. I really like these pigment dyes. I will um, leave them in the description below. I believe they're by Let's, Let's Resin. I'm just mixing them into my little resin um, cup. I'm also going to add a more opaque yellow. You'll see me get that in a minute because I didn't want it to be completely translucent. I wanted you to be able to see it. I'm really going for a honey look. And then I also add a yellow gold um, mica. So this is that uh, opaque resin um, resin dye. A little goes a long way with these resin dyes, so they really last you a long time. I really like the quality also, so I do recommend them. I'll only link things that I recommend down below. I'm going to add my yellow gold mica from Arteza. This really added a pretty shimmer to that uh, honey drip. So when you're doing a drip you want to keep mixing, keep mixing. I'm actually using a quick set resin. Um, it's called Quick Set by Glitter Craze. <laughs> this is an experiment also and I'm, tell I'm telling you that uh, when you think it's almost ready to be done, put it on your cup because this stuff set up so quickly. I think I only stirred it for about 20 minutes and it already started to get thick. It was getting hot and thick and um, right here it's still pretty thin seeming <laughs> but you'll see here in a minute as soon as I put my spoon in there to start my drip 
I had to work fast and that's part of the reason why you can't really see everything that I'm doing because I was trying to work as fast as I could. If, as soon as I took it out of the little cup and put it on my tumbler, it started dripping and hardening. <laughs> so I apologize that you can't see me actually doing this drip. Um, I was just trying to go as fast as I could and I wasn't really paying attention to uh, what you could see. But you'll see the drip here in a minute. It worked out really well. It just set up a lot faster than I really wanted it to. This gave some really good drips though. I mean, they look really cool. You can see those drips. They look like drips on a candle. <laughs> they almost look so fake, but they're they're really neat. I was happy with them. Once these drips cure, I'm going to go in with an X-Acto knife and cut around the top of the edge to uh, flatten that out so the lid would fit on correctly. I don't show that on camera. You can see here it's really setting up and getting stringy, so I'm working as fast as I can. It, it set up fast. It was like thick taffy by this point. And it started out, the drip started out really nice, but when it started getting really thick taffy-like, it didn't drip down as much as I wanted. So after that first one cured, I decided to add just a second layer of drips. Um, and this time I used the exact same resin as before, but I also knew to um, use it a little faster on the cup. <laughs> so I did. These actually, when I put them on, they were a little too thin and they dripped down further, but it turned out okay. It looks like honey. <laughs> I guess that's what I was going for, right? These drips dripped a lot faster down the cup and didn't form as solidly, um, like, oh, I don't even know how to explain, um, quite as um, drippy. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but it looks more like they're more liquid, liquefied honey drips, so it was okay. I like the way it turned out. After I am finished with this portion of the drips, I'm going to clean my rim and stick this on my turner. I'm going to resin over the drips and the bees, and I do, do apply two full co um, coats of epoxy and let them cure in between. So yes, you do epoxy over the drips again. I did anyway. You don't really have to since it is epoxy drips, but I needed to secure the vinyl and the bees anyway. I'm not going to show the final spin on the turner, but I will show you the final result of the cup. There's the drips. Looks pretty. And here it is. This is after two coats of epoxy have cured, and it just looks so pretty. You got a sparkle from the bees, the shimmer from the drips, and that wood grain crackle. I really love how this cup turned out, and I hope you guys learned something new today. Thank you so much for taking time to watch my video, and happy crafting, everyone!